Welcome to You Brew Kombucha. This is your quick start guide to making homemade kombucha. I'm Angelica, and today I'm gonna walk you through how to make one gallon of kombucha at home or anywhere. I don't really care where you make it, but I'm gonna teach you how to make a gallon of kombucha. The kombucha process typically is split up into two phases, first fermentation and second fermentation. During first fermentation, you take your sweet tea and you inoculate it with some starter liquid from a previously brewed batch of kombucha, and you add a culture called a SCOBY. It typically takes about a week or maybe a little bit longer, but at the end of a successful first fermentation, you end up with kombucha tea that's unflavored and largely uncarbonated. If you wanna have that carbonation and if you wanna add any additional flavorings, you're gonna to have to go through a second fermentation process, which I'll cover in another video. But for the time being, we're just gonna focus on getting one gallon of kombucha tea ready and prepped. So let's get started. So since kombucha is basically just fermented sweet tea, we're gonna start off by making a big batch of tea. I have four cups of filtered water boiling on the stove. And to get started, add two to three tablespoons of black unflavored plain loose leaf tea. And three quarters of a cup of organic cane sugar. Then go ahead and add your boiling water. I'm using a French press, but if you don't have a French press, you don't need to worry about it. You can just go ahead and boil your water in whatever pot or kettle you usually use to do that. And then strain your tea leaves out with a strainer. It doesn't really matter when you add your sugar to the process, as long as it gets in there at some point. But I like to add it when the liquid is hot so that it dissolves more easily. So go ahead and let that steep for about 15 minutes. I know it sounds like a long time, but we're basically making a tea concentrate. And the longer you let your tea steep, the more nutrients will get extracted into the water to feed your starter tea and to feed your culture. Don't worry about being super precise on the measurements. This is a basic guideline that you can use. Some people like to add more sugar, but I really don't recommend adding any less than three quarters of a cup per gallon because the sugar is really important for the culture. Once your tea has been steeping for 15 minutes, take your brewing vessel and add eight cups of cold filtered water to it. This is what you're gonna use to dilute your concentrated tea that's been steeping in the, in the French press. And the reason why we're making a concentrated tea and then diluting it after the fact is because you wanna get that temperature down to a good range for the SCOBY to live in. Um, the first time I made kombucha, I didn't do this. I went ahead and just boiled a big batch of water um, to make my tea and it took forever for it to cool down. Um, and I didn't know whether I could stick it in the fridge to let it cool down faster, which you can by the way. Um, but because I was a first timer and I didn't know whether I was allowed to do that, I ended up waiting around for my tea to cool down before I could put it, um, before I could put my SCOBY in there. So now to save all of that hassle, I just go ahead and make a tea concentrate, then have a bunch of water ready to dilute it and get it down to a good temperature. And temperature is really important because you wanna make sure that your sweet tea is above 65 degrees and below 90 degrees. Any hotter than that and it could kill it. Any lower than around 65 degrees and you could put your scopy at risk for mold. So this looks like it's right around 87 degrees, which is great. You can go ahead and add your starter tea from a previously brewed batch of kombucha. So starter tea is just another term for um, pre a previously brewed batch of kombucha that's gone through a successful first fermentation. If you're getting your SCOBY from a reputable source, it should come with a good amount of starter tea for you to get started brewing your own kombucha. Starter tea is really important. It's actually more important than the SCOBY itself. That starter tea is what's gonna acidify the kombucha and drop it to a low enough pH so that it won't be susceptible to mold or other harmful pathogens. So make sure that before you get started, you have a good amount of strong starter tea available to you. If you don't have enough starter tea or for some reason you have a SCOBY that doesn't have starter tea, you can just go to the store and buy some raw unflavored kombucha and use that to bump up the amount of starter tea that you have for your um, batch of kombucha. Just whatever you do, don't use vinegar. There are a lot of sites out there that say that you can use vinegar to help drop that pH and use it in place of starter tea. It is not an okay substitute for starter tea. You can check out my video on top mistakes that home brewers make for more information on that. But just remember, vinegar is not okay. 
So we've already got two cups of good strong starter tea in here. We're ready to add the SCOBY and we're almost done. So this is a SCOBY from a previously brewed batch of my kombucha. You can just go ahead and add it in there. It doesn't really matter if it sinks or floats. For the most part, it'll just kind of bob around and then it'll float to the top in the next couple of days. But when you're ready, go ahead and cover it with a tight leave cotton cloth. Any old cloth will do if you have a handkerchief, an old t-shirt, just whatever you have on hand, even a coffee filter would work as long as the weave is tight enough to keep dust and insects out of your brew. Now just secure it with a rubber band. And for the most part, you can just leave it alone for the next week or so. How easy is that? So go ahead and stash this somewhere away from direct sunlight for about a week to a week and a half. That's about how long it takes for my brew to develop that nice acidic tang. But in the meantime, make sure that you check out my videos on what to expect during the first fermentation process and how to know when you're ready to bottle. And you can also find a lot more details and resources at youbrewkombucha.com. Happy brewing.